Happy, happy Sunday, everybody. Welcome to the Wolf, the Black Wolf Project. I'm Kamari Ellison. You know, my, I have my cast of friends here along with me every week. We talk about black wealth issues. So you can kind of think of us like the black team for financial wealth, dedicated to financial wealth. So today we've got a great show for you. Our main topic is, is black ownership a form of rebellion? Again, is black ownership a form of rebellion? So you all chime in into the comments and let us know what you think about. But before we get going, how you doing, everybody? Oh, we good, man. Yeah, we good. You know, you yeah. See, man. see the shirt, happy as fuck. I mean, hey, yeah. <laughs> we can cuss. We can cuss. Oh, yeah. Is that is that a new creation, Malik? You know, it's not mine. It's, it's my nephew's. It's part of his um his line. Hey, oh, it's, oh. it's still black, black on black. You it know? is. Right. It, it, it is black. Yeah, I should have made my business of the week. I see for next week, probably. Okay, all right, that works. That works. All right, let's let's jump into our health check in real quick. How is everybody doing with the health? Walking, eating, drinking water, eating good. Yeah, I actually I had an amazing week. Um, you know, I, I took an extra step. I I signed up for Weight Watchers just because I needed a way to to track what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Um, and I wanted to take it more serious because. You know, it's one thing to say you're doing it, but I need this. I needed more accountability. Let's put it that way. So, and I had a great week. So I'm, I'm, you know, pretty excited about it. So you're counting your points, right? Everything. That's right. right. I, here's the crazy part, though. I'm, I'm keeping a buck, right? You know, because we, 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 we very transparent here. I've done it in the past. I did it in the past and lost about a hundred pounds, but then I thought I knew it all. You know how that go. I mean, I don't know if I'm the only one that can relate to that, but no, no, for sure. No. Okay, cool. okay, okay, okay. <laughs> all right, got you, got yeah. you. So I know that it works, but it's just that, you know, you think you know it all. But I was like, you know what? Um, you know, we talk a lot about wealth, but wealth is not just money. I need, right. to put, I need to invest in this, too. So I took that step this week. So I had a pretty good week. So I'm pretty excited about it. OK. OK. What about you, Courtney? How are we making out? We Peloton it out? We're Peloton it out. Um, I use a pre-workout when I work out just because with keto, you're energy isn't up. It's not, it's level. It's not, you're not getting this because you're not getting fuel from carbs. So that being said, my, uh, my pre-workout is somewhere between here and Indiana. It came to Philly, but then I don't know, they sent it back. And now I'm just like, what, what's going on guys? <laughs> you're messing up stuff. So, um, so Peloton is fine. Like I said, I think last week I told you guys, we just finished our like power zone training. So I'm starting a new training and I got a yoga mat by a black owned company. Can I grab it? Oh, that's dope. Oh, grab it. Okay. It's, oh, it's heavy, but here it is y'all. So I don't, can I see it? Oh yeah. yeah. Here's a black lady. Here's a black lady. So wait, hold it. Here it is. There it is. So Yo, that's fire. What, what's the Yo, name of you got, yeah, you got to shoot us that link. I never heard of that one. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. So it's, it's real dope. She has a couple of different and I got it. And actually, you know, shout out to Black Business. I ordered it like on Tuesday, and I want to say I got it like, and they're in they're in North Carolina. I want to say I got it like on Thursday. So like, I got it. I put it in. I put my little orders, and I got it. Next day, I knew your order has been shipped. I was like, really? And then, I mean, it was like ding, 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 ding. And then I, I turn around, and then here it is. And it's it's really, really thick. It's just it's beautiful. As you can see, is this beautiful black woman on it. So I'm starting a yoga practice. Um, there is a new yoga instructor at Peloton. She's a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha. Very excited. So, you know, shout out to Peloton as always. She made yeah. I said, like, yes, so more. I'm so excited. I was like, yeah. wait, wait the, the, the only Greeks on here are the ladies. That's it. No other Greeks. No other Greeks. Nah. Nah. Yeah, nah. I'm an actor. <laughs> <laughs> I, knew, I knew somebody was going to say that. I was like, I said, I, I, thought, it was gonna be, I thought it was going to be Corey, but it was Kamara. No, no, I, 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 I slang Greeks did today. That's not on my agenda. That's not on. That's not on my agenda to do today. <laughs> All right. So, uh, how you doing, Tracy? How you making out with your journey? I'm doing well. I mean, I'm definitely drinking way more water now that the temperature is back up, which is good. I mean, I don't drink a lot of like soda or um, different things like that. But um, especially with work picking up like crazy, I am walking, my steps are up. I am so excited <laughs> about how this summer is gonna pan out because I feel like I'm probably gonna lose some weight just, just in walking. Okay, that works, that works. 
What about you, Corey? You down there in Texas? How you making out? Uh, I'm making out, man. I, I'm eating whatever I get my hands on. I can't even lie. Like I'm trying to, I'm trying to get it together. <laughs> but you know, I mean, I've been on the road for about ten days. So yeah, you've been eating Bojangles cookout, all that. <laughs> No, no. See, my, my folks southern. I eat at I, I eat I, I eat at home. I don't have to eat. But on the, the but on the, on the road though. Why you on the road? Why you I don't, I don't I don't eat anything on the road. What? I don't, no, I can't because I, I start to get motion sick and then we got to oh, pull yeah, over yeah, for sure, for sure, every for five sure. minutes. So yeah. I don't eat when, while I'm driving. I don't eat nothing. The, so, those are the after effects of the um transatlantic transatlantic uh, voyage right there. The, the <laughs> <motion picture. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I can't I can't eat nothing on the road or it's gonna be on the side of the road thrown up somewhere. Yeah. I can't go. So okay. uh, so yeah, but you know, I've been eating this good southern food, so I can't tell you, you know, what my weight look like or <laughs> nothing. Like, you know All what right. I mean? Well get your keep your water up, brother. Keep your water up. Can't oh, I drink I, I drink a gallon of water a day easy. That's that's okay. that's not the hard part. The hard part is to stay off those, you know, the, the fish fries and the and the chicken wings and the you know you. and the mac and cheese and the greens and you know yeah. They 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 keep you fed. Yeah. 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 All right, Malik, how, how you making out? Well, I mean, it was my birthday week, so I really didn't, wasn't really eating that great all week long. And as right now, I have my Kraken available on deck. You know, really more than vegan to the weekend, huh? You oh, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, listen, look, but to, my birthday week is over. You know, tomorrow we back at it. I had my delivery of vegetables, so, so I'm straight. I got okay. it. My, my, my wife got some blender bombs. Whatever it's like, some chaya seeds and some other stuff, and with the smoothie. So that's what I'll be doing. So at least breakfast, I do the smoothie situation, and then some more vegetables, and you know whatever else that she got planned for me. Because if it, you know, it's up to me. Did he say delivery of vegetables? Mm-hmm. Yeah, delivery. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Oh, you yeah, can trust Okay, yeah. that's dope. Uh, I, 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 I know. 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 There's another seat now. You also got a you got a you got a you got a vegetable guy. Guy that just brings your vegetables, huh? Yeah, yeah. Malik, Malik, Malik he be he be stunting full time. Like he he ain't even a half time stunner. Yeah, full time stunner. So listen, when you think about Black Elite, just put up a picture of Malik. Full <laughs> <laughs> time. He's nah, the Yeah, no, nah, he ain't not bougie by Malik. Ain't not no. Hey, bougie. He just no. You know, nah. He like what he like, and I ain't mad at that. brother, man. You work hard. Listen, I gotta. At, at some point, I had to outgrow the Scarface and the uh, Bob Marley posters on the wall. I had to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't mad at that. But all right, so I only I didn't run that much this week, y'all. I only ran about seven miles this week. I put my bike in the shop though, so hopefully I'll be uh, biking and running in the uh, upcoming week. I'm supposed okay. to get it back on the 11th. So y'all probably see pics of me running and biking all at the same time. So yeah, I wait too, I wait too much to run. I get my bike out though. Yeah, well, Malik, you kind of encourage that, or maybe it was somebody on here because y'all was like, we got to think about biking and keep them knees. We're getting older, got to be able to take care of ourselves. <laughs> I didn't right. think, but that's a it really somebody in the comments. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna get to them. I got one. I want to. I want to get to Jimmy. Hold on, real tight, real quick. All right, so. Moving right along, the Bob of the week. The oh, no, 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 no. I was saying that that's where it came from. Someone in the comments a couple weeks ago told you to hey, get on a bike. That's what I was saying. Oh, oh, okay, okay. I'm getting, I'm getting feedback already. That's a good thing. So moving along, we got the Bob of the week. This week's selection is by Mr. Real Estate Coach Carter, Malik Carter. Who you got? That is me. Can I share my screen? Oh uh, yeah. All right, I'm gonna share the screen. Stunting again. <laughs> <laughs> Professional. Ain't none of us shedding. Ain't none of us shed our screen. He's like, oh, you know, I want to one up him again. <laughs> Malika, uh, professional uh, stunt man. <laughs> Wait, is it shared? Can you see it? No. Uh-huh. All right. 
I, see, I should have I did this first. Oh, uh, all right. All right. Can you see it now? Yeah, I got it. All right. So, all yeah. Right. So, for my, my birthday, this is what we ate. We ordered this from uh, Orchard Smoothie Cafe, uh, a BOB. Um, I pulled it up to see the address. Oh, address is up here. But I think it's at 1500 Reed Street. But um, the owner, Hakeem, he really took good care of us. I'm sure you what we ordered right there that, um, that, that fried uh, lobster burger, which was um, spectacular. You know, we scrolled down. We also had the the buffalo uh, shrimp crab cheese fries. So, you know, oh, the, this crab fried rice was crazy too. Right there on the left side, you'll see there's a um, a soft shell crab burger. I didn't have that. They were out of that one. You know, right. but um, everything on the menu. Hey, no, we we yeah, we ordered a, we ordered a bunch of stuff, man. You know, life life was a celebration. Oh, oh, oh right here, these it's uh, today, it's his birthday, man. Yeah, right. The, the lamb chops with the shrimp, all that. Listen, so Orchard Smoothie Cafe, shut the high came. Like he really um, you know, helped me down. Uh, I want to see. So the address is fifteen hundred Federal Street, not read fifteen fifteen hundred Federal, Federal Street. Street. Right. Okay. So listen, everybody, uh, go check them out. Order from them. I know Malik got. I can't probably the person deliver it. But, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but, no, listen, no, but he did. He did slide. He did slide some birthday uh, <laughs> carrot cake, and that was excellent. Smoothies. Yeah. Now we ordered. We probably ordered a, a bunch of stuff, man. And yeah, so, you don't want to say no price because you a stunt man. You don't want to say a price. But no, no, right. Hold on. in all seriousness, right? In all seriousness, right? Malik, it sounds like your customer experience with him was stellar. I got tagged on a post this weekend today asking, are we supporting black owned business? And I'm still seeing people talking about black businesses don't have good customer support. So it's very great. Someone asked you that? I don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> I, don't, I just bring it up because I feel like we have to dispel this myth that black owned businesses are trash. They're not trash, right? You have some bad black owned businesses, just like you got some bad white owned businesses. Right, but there's enough enough in our community that we can support and patronize all the time. And then even a good business can have a bad day. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. That's right. That's right. I just I, I definitely feel like you need to give these black owned businesses the same amount of grace that you're giving these other businesses. If they have a bad day or if they don't put the amount of right amount of fries in your in your happy meal. You want to make sure that you, when you go back the next time, hey, I'd like you to do better. You really didn't do right by me as a customer. Can you try again? Some of these people just write off black owned businesses because they had a bad day. I don't I don't want to I don't want to hijack the topic. I just want to say this real fast. A lot of times with the smaller black businesses, they hire who they can afford. A lot of times it's like family and friends and they might not care as much about the business overall. The owner can have them have, you know, the best intent. But if the only person they can trust is the auntie, you know, who they know they're not going to fire, then that, that's a whole uh, other thing. But like I said, all in all, I had a, um, a, a great experience um, with, with, with this time with your smoothie. OK, great. Thank I you. just want to say I just want to say this, this is a whole show. So I'm, I'm going to save my comments because yeah. I have some, too. But we could, we could do a whole show on this. Yeah, we sure. have some, well, we are going to do a whole show. on. Yeah, it. we should. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So listen, everybody knows today's topic is is black ownership of former rebellion. Hold tight, though. I want to show some because I thought this comment was interesting that we had. Right. So once we view this comment, I want everybody to kind of chime in on how they feel about black ownership being a form of rebellion. But take a look at this comment. So this comment is from Oil House, and he said, nope, black ownership is conservative, regrettably, but change will eventually come. So let's kick the topic off. Black ownership is in a form of rebellion. Courtney, you're up first. Ooh, I'm, up I'm first. sorry, Corey's up first. I'm sorry. Oh, okay, <laughs> uh, court, uh, black ownership as a form of rebellion? I mean, it, ownership is is built into the into this country so i don't know if you want to call it rebellion but it, it is the way to control your control your your destiny in the best way for the the way this country is constructed so if you want to call that rebellious controlling your own destiny 
then yeah, that's rebellious. I controlling my own destiny doesn't feel rebellious to me because that's what I always have set out to do and strive to do. But if if you want to call you know ownership rebellious, then yeah, then that's what it is. You know, I mean, if you don't own anything, then you don't you can't win. So I don't know if you if you want to I don't know if you want to call that rebellion, but you know I, I call it you know the best possible outcome if you want to win the game. Gotcha. So. All right, let's go to Courtney. Okay. Um. Ooh. Um. I. I think. I think you have two things going on. Um. Especially in the United States, as being a black person in the United States. So the first thing is, is that the historical backdrop is that we have historically been owned. You know, we were listed as three fourths, three. Excuse me, three fifths of a person to be considered as part of. You're getting the benefit of representation. Um, excuse me, you're not. Um, slave owners were getting the benefit of representation in Congress based on their numbers of slaves, based on their property. So they kind of acknowledged our person being a person, but didn't acknowledge our personhood. So we were be we were owned, and now us trying to to own something as being a uh, chattel before, I think it's revolutionary, um, especially in the way that we kind of. Also, our parents have been, or at least my parents and their generation have said, like, oh, you go to you go to work, you, uh, excuse me, you go to college, you get a good job, you buy a house, you retire. Like, that was kind of their paradigm. And now we're starting to see that that's not quite it. So, again, the ownership, basically being able to be owned and generate income off of that ownership, I definitely feel is rebellion. And we're actually able, being an owner gives you the ability to make to make really big decisions. And even the way the country has been set up, landowners, at one point, if you, you only had a vote if you were a landowner. So if you were owner is the only way that you actually were heard. But at the same time now, if you're an owner, you're actually heard. If you're not, then you, you don't have, you don't really have a voice. So gotcha. I definitely think it's a rebellion. Okay, Jimmy. I look at uh, ownership as being um, the key to power. And I think that's that's what we need right now more than anything else. We don't need our inboxes flooded with companies telling us, hey, I said black people all of a sudden. We need power. No one is talking about power. So it's interesting. I was looking. We had this conversation a couple of days ago. I was looking up the definition of rebellion. <laughs> and um, one of the definitions is um, resisting authority or control. So it kind of goes to what Corey was saying about taking control. So I, I think ownership can be a form of rebellion because what you're doing is you're taking control. We know the system that we're currently in now. If you want to talk about whether that's a good system or not, that's a whole different conversation. Um, but from the way I look at it, the, the current system is not changing anytime soon. So if we're going to operate within this system, ownership is a form of rebellion. And that's why, because what you're doing is you're getting back your control through, um, you know, operating within the system and, and you're acquiring things and taking control. And I love what Courtney said as well. You look at it from the historical context um, of some some. Uh, people that were once owned to now owning things, right? So that is also exercising control, which is going back to that definition, um, resisting authority or control. So absolutely, ownership is a form of rebellion. So Tracy, it's on you, but I, I just put the definition of rebellion up on the screen so we all can be up on the, on the same page. And as you said, Jimmy, it's uh, rebellion, open-armed, and usually unsuccessful defiance or resistance to an established government in essence of such defiance or resistance. These definitions are a little tainted in, in my opinion, but I just always like to have a common ground to go with. But I would say B um, is probably uh, more relevant. But uh, Tracy, it's on you. Okay. Um, yes, absolutely. I absolutely agree. Um, black ownership is a form of rebellion. Definitely. Um, piggybacking on the conversation with Jimmy about the actual definition of rebellion, which basically explains that it's, it's an act of open resistance to the established system. So that's exactly what's going on when you have someone of color who chooses to also create and establish something that is not the norm or is not uh, particularly uh, supported by the current system or the current government. Um, 
I, I literally think back to people like Madam C.J. Walker and the time frame in which she created what she created, the amount of ter tenacity and ferocity that needed to be in the fire in her belly to overcome the amount of not only stress, struggle, finances, support, and constant reinventing or creating, recreating the wheel with, you know, used or spokes that were thrown at her. I feel like that is the absolute definition of an entrepreneur. And it's even triple that when it's someone of color, because they don't give us the normal tools that we need to build something. So when we do have to build it on our own, it absolutely is nothing more than a, a form of rebellion. So it's on me. So, you know, I'm the finance rebel. I love, I love the word rebel. I love the word rebellion because as Courtney put it, right. Cause we have to think about this from the black perspective, from the black context. So when we were once, we were once cattle property and now we're working to own property. It's absolutely, a, it's absolutely rebellion. Right, because we're not supposed to be smart because all propaganda that was once depicting black people depicted us as animals. Right. And you could talk about a three fist doctrine, but it goes back even further than that. And so everything that we do that shows that we're smart, that shows that we're talented, that shows that we're worthy enough to own property or buy stock. Because remember, we couldn't buy property at one point. We couldn't buy stock. Many of the things that we do today that many of us take for granted we couldn't do a hundred years ago. We couldn't do 60 years ago. I mean, so as we continue to progress forward, we are actively rebelling and we should look at it that way. And I don't see it as being conservative as, as all at all, because the system tells us to be consumers first and foremost, right? They don't want us to be, to be owners and that's everybody, but especially for black folks. So yeah, I think, you know, one of my favorite taglines is the tagline from Jimmy and Corey. They always say, own some shit. I'd be mad because I want to use that tagline myself. I might just hijack it one day. But I, <laughs> I think, Listen, it's already been hijacked by a million people. You got it, good brother. <laughs> but, yeah, we all fighting together. We all fighting listen, together. In all seriousness, though, I think that's real, right? We should own things, right? Um, because without ownership, there is no control, no matter which way you look at it. So when you look at what's the what are some of the best ways you think we should be approaching black ownership? Uh, Malik, 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 don't get a chance to answer this. I oh, guess we no, get, I'm my, sorry, my, opinion, my opinion don't matter. I guess. Yeah, but it matters. <laughs> like, <laughs> y'all know he's a the troublemaker. Sorry, man. <laughs> in my opinion. So so we're talking about you know home uh, home, uh, ownership. Right. As a form of, of rebellion, I think it depends on what the purpose is. Right. If the purpose is, you know, there are people in your community not providing good service. And you say, OK, I want to do that business, do it better. If you see there's people that are being taken advantage of and you want to do it a different way. Right. Or if a business that you're not supposed to be in, but you do it and then you want to excel. I look at that 100 percent as a form of rebellion, ownership and any other way i consider a form of survival right because it is is really you really need ownership to like like everybody said you know have power i read an article last year and they in the city of philadelphia um the owner the um, black people only own two percent of the businesses here in philadelphia a business that's like 60 percent black or so right so as the great dr claw anderson uh says uh, black unemployment is high because black entrepreneurship is low. Now, that number might be deflated because of standards like how I'm not reporting it. But the fact is, whatever their roles are, only 2% of those roles are black owned. Now, I want to make um, one other point. I want to use the analogy of sports, right? When you look at like football, you look at basketball, you see all these uh, players out there risking their body, life, and limb, you know, without guaranteed contracts in football, take an injury, career only lasting three years, and they break arms, they break legs, break everything else. But at the end of the day, the first person to hoist that trophy over their head is the owner who ain't did no work on the field. 
not, not one dime. You know, the players in the background, the owner come out of his booth, run out to the sideline, and hoist that trophy over the head. And that's the picture when you when you think about ownership, that's what you think about. All these black bodies when they feel putting it all on the line and this old white cat holding the trophy up over the head. So and from a rebellion, if we want to do like Master P uh, and like Ice Cube, get out of their league, then absolutely from a rebellion. Otherwise, you know, it's a form of survival. Thank you, Kamari, for allowing me this time. Thank you, uh... I, 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 done, I done started something. I, I, no apologies, my brother Malik. Jeez. So listen, there, there's a couple of comments um, I would like to bring up. And Courtney, I want you to take this one. So Mr. Christopher T. Catching says, my origins began before my ancestors' enslavement. With that said, I don't see it as a rebellion. We're entitled to prosperity. And then he followed up with this statement. This conversation is problematic. The Ivy investor, you're smarter than this. So, Courtney, um, I, I'm not going to give the tea away, but I, I would love for you to respond <laughs> to that. Okay. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so let's 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 put these things in, in real perspective because I think. One of the things that we have to talk about is correct. We did not start as enslaved. We did not start as enslaved in the general process of the world. I mean, the origin of the man's heart is black. So let's be very clear about that. However, our origins in the United States as it pertains to modern times, because let's be very clear, Dr. Ivan Van Surma said we came before Columbus. And that was very clear. And that has been proven time and time again that African seafarers have been in the Americas well before Christopher Columbus came. So I want to be very clear and, and make it make the point very plain is that that's not what I was saying at all. And I'm sorry if you misconstrued it when it comes to having a conversation about ownership and it and vis -a -vis black Americans. We have to talk about slavery. We have to talk about chattel slavery. It's not something that we can ignore as much as we would like to. We cannot. And let's be very clear about all the protests that have been going on over the last month or so or however long it's been since um, I don't know. I mean, how many how many people have died so far? You know, so every single time the interaction between black people and uh, I should say black people generally and the police actually comes from the slave catcher, that relationship, which comes from slavery. So unfortunately, as much as I would like to stop talking about slavery and actually stop talking about origins of the of Africans enslaved being in the United States, I can't because we it's a very different different situation and a very different circumstance that we can't ignore because it frames everything we have going on here. You know, black men during slavery were pictured to be violent and that's their justification for beating the living daylights out of them. Also, black women are be, are viewed to be sexualized and over-sexualized so it, justifica it justified the master's rape of them. So I want to be very clear that unfortunately, as much as I would like to not talk about slavery and our relationship to it, we can't avoid it. And ownership is very much a historical context, especially when it comes when we talk about the Constitution. My law degrees, I think, talk about the Constitution enough. But if you would like a little bit more com commentary, I'm more than welcome to give it to you. If you would like to explain your comments about me being smarter than that. Thanks. Um, so... Um, I, I, I want to add this in there, right? When you look at the unemployment numbers, I don't know if anybody looked at this week's unemployment numbers. Unemployment numbers went down. But guess whose unemployment numbers went up? The black community. Ours right. did. Although that num th those numbers were fishy to me anyway. I mean, but that's yeah. there. They're, they're always fishy. But for right now, we're going to take them as facts, right? And so, mm -hmm. I mean, the way they collect the numbers is fishy, right? So let's get that out of the way. However, however, black unemployment is always more than that the nation's average. Mm -hmm. And so when we come back, when we bring it back to black ownership, we know after desegregation, a lot of our businesses tend to go away. Mm -hmm. We also know that the majority of black employment comes from outside of the government comes from black owned businesses. And so when you have a lot of people who have unemployment and we're looking at a way to sustain ourselves and do better in society overall, we need more black businesses. And so that is a form of rebellion, in my opinion. Well, you know, it's, it's good yeah. to have some um, opposition. 
I uh, I appreciate the opposition. That's necessarily the comment, but the opposition. No, you don't think that Kamara. <laughs> no, I, listen. You, you know, as we always say. No, I just want to say, like me. You know, that's what that's one of our things is about ownership, because we think that everything else will come come from that in terms right. of employing our people. To me, like we talk about rebellion and revolutionary. One of the more revolutionary things you can do is help another black person feed their family, and that comes via ownership. As mentioned in Corey, right. Corey and I's book, Own Your Time and Space. Um, and, and shout out to you, Malik, for that mention today. I appreciate that. Appreciate but, um, you. you know, everything comes from that, right? Because to me, that's one of the most revolutionary things you can do is help someone provide for their family. And, you know, to me, that is a form of rebellion. And, you know, I don't, I don't want to uh, go any further than what was said. Courtney laid it out very eloquently. But we, ha we have to use that as a framework because... Everything we're dealing with now, and you know, I, I don't know the brother. It was built you know, from the framework. It was built from the framework of slavery. The the the, the way. Oh, absolutely. This, I, but what I'm saying is, like, I know I know a lot of times that framework of slavery. Well, I want to listen. Say I know a lot of times, like you know, I I I get, I get a lot of feedback like that too. Um, you know, specifically and Kamar, you know how the people that follow our page they go at us, right? right? So I get a lot of that feedback too about you know, um, we were here before slavery, this, that, and the third, and it's all is nothing but pontification, and it's not actual action, and it's not actually doing anything to change something. It's not it's not action. It's just talking about what we were. I'm not saying that gentleman does that because I have no idea, but to me, that's why. We talk about ownership. That's actual action. That's doing something. That's putting yourself in a position to help feed another person, an, an, another one of your brothers or sisters. So to me, that's why it's a form of rebellion. But go ahead, so Corey. I, I, I want to say this real quick, right? So a lot of times we talk about rebellion. We talk about marching. We talk about getting free, right? And if you study any other people, they always had a way to fund their revolutions. I think we're like the only people that don't talk about ways to fund their revolution. Now, you could take revolution in whatever way you want right but rifles cost money food costs money and if you're thinking strategically about trying to really move something along whether it's from a peaceful standpoint or a violent one you're going to need resources you're going to need logistics and if you don't have any money i don't know how you do it but the other thing i think people need to think about too is that black business owners have always helped to fund the revolution or yes, civil always or whatever, Always. Every single whatever, time. whatever way you want to call it, right? We can go back to Robert Church in Memphis, Tennessee, after the riots in Memphis, right? During like the 1800s-ish, I think after uh, Civil War. We can look at A.G. Gaston's that built Martin, Martin Luther yep. King County Jail several times. Um, we can look at um, uh, owner of Ebony and Jet. I uh, can't think of his name, something Johnson. John Johnson. John Johnson, Johnson, Robert, yeah, John Johnson. Did a lot of things to fund um, civil rights as well. So, you know, when we talk about ownership, it's not just home ownership. It's not just business ownership. We're also talking about ownership of owning our process to move us forward and getting us free. So, you know, don't just think about it from the linear aspect of owning a home or owning a business, but just owning our stuff to move forward. Like for me, but the thing is, the, the, own, the, the own your time, you have to own things, right? Because the, the, the reason why we don't rebel a lot of times is because we're 98% of us work for, for white people in some form, shape, or fashion, and we're scared to lose our jobs. Right. And so when you own stuff, you can say stuff, and you can do stuff on a whole different level because now you're not afraid of not being able to eat while you're rebelling. And so on another level, to, for the rebellion to happen, we have to own things. Right. So I don't really look at uh, ownership as a form of rebellion because ownership in itself is not a form of rebellion. But in the context that we're talking about it, you have to own things to be able to put the time in to do the things that we talk about. Like it's it's, it's impossible. It's, it's just absolutely impossible if you got to go work for somebody 40 hours a week and feed your family and do all of these other things. That you're you're spending time on on the on the rebellion, on breaking down systems. You just can't do it. If you if you got a forty hour a week job and you got kids, there's absolutely no way if you're working for somebody else for that amount of time that you're going to be a full time rebel because your your full time job is the one that's paying. So just to be clear, 
ownership in that way is is the rebellion because it gives you time to do this. You, you, that's why kids are always on the front lines of the rebellion because they're not responsible for feeding families. That's right. why the kids are always the, on the front line because the people that's feeding the family is is actually out there doing the work. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, and also, Kamari. Well, let me jump. I, I was just going to say, uh, go ahead. You got it. You got it. So I was going to say to Corey's point, um, I've been talking to a couple people, um, and a couple people have been afraid to speak their minds and fear of losing their jobs. And when I say speak their minds, talk about it publicly, whether it be on social media, whether it be to attend the job. Um, and so I get that. Again, they're 30 plus. They got kids to feed. Um, they got houses and bills to pay for. So like Corey said, you know, a lot of people are afraid of that. So they don't have freedom. And so the thing is, well, how do we start working towards becoming financially free so we can work on rebellion in a strategic sense a lot more? But go ahead, Jimmy, what were you saying? No, I was just I was just going to say to your point about um, the business class always funding revolutions like um, back in the early 19th century, uh, Mary Ellen Pleasant. Yep. who was a multimillionaire. And in the early 19th century, she was a multimillionaire um, real estate magnet as, 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 as well as other businesses. And she took everything and funded abolition. Like she, she, the Underground Railroad and many other abolitionists, she was taking money that she was able to make um, as a woman in the early 19th century and, and fund all of these movements. So this is something that's part of our history as well. So you, you can't really have a revolution without funding. I was just going to, you know, piggyback on what you said and give another example, because I, that's, I think that's important to remember. It's important to remember, like just because you're a revolutionary, don't mean you got to be a broke revolutionary. Don't, like you don't have to be, but um, you need people to fund your movement. Exactly. All right. So before we move along, let's just check in with the comments real quick. Uh, Jay Johnson says, absolutely. From the view, I'm 100 percent rebelling against his current system, a system that, that does, he said, does support me. I'm assuming he meant to say does. He said does not. He, he, no, yeah, he, he fixed it. He fixed it in oh, the previous next, uh, yeah, okay. yeah, he said does not support him. A system that does not support him. So I'm striving for rebellion. All right, brother. That's uh, our part right there. That's our part. Oh, okay. Salute, Jay. Okay, Salute, so Jay. Oil House says, I don't know, guys. Most black people don't support the KKK, but I wouldn't call KKK supporters radical revolutionary. The absence of black business ownership doesn't make their present alone radical. Their presence alone radical. I mean, it, it doesn't. It, okay, so, so I, I want to answer this a little bit. So what, what we're talking about here is the, the the KKK supporters. They're they are radicals. They they believe radically that the country should belong to white people. So. It, it, them owning businesses doesn't make them a radical, but they're they have the ownership and they have the backing of other businesses mm -hmm. and they have the 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 complexion for the protection to be able to do the things that they're able to do through funding. The KKK is not unfunded. Mm -hmm. I don't know what this is <laughs> like. Like the KKK got money, so and that money is coming from their business class. So I don't. Understand what this comment is trying to get at. Me either. Yeah, I'm gonna have to say the same. I, I'm really confused as to. <laughs> Listen, I, I, I <laughs> money. Hold on, Cordy. Let me hold let on. Me, so, oil ahead. house. Maybe, maybe you want to rephrase the question or re-put the question or statement back there. But go ahead, go ahead, Courtney. So, I, I think there's a. <laughs> Uh, Jimmy said it earlier, ownership is power and white people own stuff and they get their agenda through. And they basically they base own all of the channels to get things through. They have the ability to fund their politicians, which funds their agenda. Their politicians then appoint uh, certain people to uh, work in the executive branch. And it, it's, it's a whole and then they appoint judges. I mean, or they either have people elect judges because, I mean, the state judges are elected, federal judges are appointed. So that being said is that the whole system is built on power and the, and the system of power is built on money. And so for us to, to consistently rail against that, we are rebelling. And, and 
Lauren Hill has a song on her Unplugged album in 2002. And she, and she starts out, I find it hard to say. And I, I find it hard to say that everything is going to be all right. He kind of goes into, and it's actually um, in reference to a police brutality, um, I'm going to do Diallo, which is what, 99. And it's just so funny when you listen to the words, you're like, oh, this is like today. Like, how prophetic is this? But again, it's about the power struggle that we've been facing for the last 400 plus years. And, and all of it's been funded on our backs. I mean, the United States is even here because of the work that we put in for free. For free. Yeah. So, the world that, system, the reason why people go to other countries to, to, to get their work done, because now, because the United States was unionized and you have to actually pay people to do the work. The United States has a, a, uh, what you, what you, a minimum wage that you have to pay people because people fought for that. Right. And so the reason why, you know, they take these uh, these companies to Mexico and the China and the Indonesia is because you can pay them 20 cents an hour because that's what they did here, because we laid the groundwork for that here, because the, our economy was built because we had free labor. And so that the, the, the practice of slavery here has set the set the example for the world to when, when, mm -hmm. when countries try to build their economies, they frame it. After the work that we did here, which was to build it on the back of free labor. And so to, to, to try to take that out of context and say that ownership isn't power and rebellion is absolutely berserk and nuts. Like, it's just I just want to say real fast. I just want to say real fast that it's the reason why voting alone won't do anything. Mm -hmm. If you have no money behind it, it just won't do anything. Yeah. Um, Lauren Hill also Lauren Hill also said on Unplug that. You know, fantasy is what we want, but reality is what we need. So we had this fantasy. Uh, I got Lauren Hill quotes too. We got this fantasy that you know we could just Ours. vote things away, but it won't even matter. Like reality is what we need, and reality is this is how the system works. Like you know, we, we know that politicians are bought and sold. So you know, and I just wanted to get that Lauren Hill bar off too. Okay, let's uh, look at this last question and let's move on to the next topic. Mm -hmm. Okay, ownership and cultivating the ability to defend that ownership, yes, will allow you to control your circumstance in any system. Anybody got anything for that? No, nah, I mean, it's kind of kind of spot on. Yeah, it's right on time. Yeah, nah, yeah. yeah that's, that's facts. That's I, facts. I, I do think, though, I do think that, con that comment in this context needs to be talked about a little bit more because it reminds me of the whole Booker T slap versus W.E.B. Du Bois. Like which one's better, education and or trade? Because um, we do need to be able to defend anything that we acquire, uh, defend it physically, defend it politically, defend it uh, emotionally and also psychologically. Through the law too. Yep, absolutely. All right, so next question. What do y'all think about all this corporate patronage? What? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Jimmy, Jimmy, you just brought it up. You gotta talk about that. No, like, let me let me tell you oh, no. real quick. Yo. Okay, go ahead, Malik. Go ahead, go ahead, Malik. You so, go. I just love the fact that supporting black people is now in vogue. I mean, whether they, the point is, yes, all it's a lot of pandering. It's a lot of stuff. You know, most of it is not real. You know, some of it is real. But the fact that supporting black people is in vogue, like a company, like you, they actually have to draw lines. I'm talking about like, you know, to the point where, you know, uh, the, the the owner of Keller Williams called me the other day asking my opinion on how uh, it should be addressed. He didn't listen to me, but he actually called and was like, "Okay, how should it uh, be addressed?" Well, of the, what did you tell him? Of, of my of my Keller. Oh, me. Listen, I I went in. I went in. I came from like I went in. Um, we had a real conversation. I mean, down to the down to the point of um down to the, that's what that's. Down to the point of, I said the advertiser, not even including necessarily his team, but it's another team in my office. They they do have like one. It's a, it's a big team. They have like one, maybe two black agents in this big team, but all the marketing goes out is all white people. And I was like, well, look at look at the imagery of that. And he was like, well, I didn't think about that, and I don't really see. He said, down to he the said, point. 
And he said, I don't even, uh, he said, I don't see color. And I was like, yo, that's your luxury. I don't, I don't have that. I don't have that luxury <laughs> not to see color. Yeah. Right. You know, so no, we had like a, like, I'm sure when he called me, he wanted some fluff, but that's, that's not the conversation that we had, you oh, know, man. and um, smoke. yeah, yeah, no, I, I definitely, I definitely do. Smoke show. Yo, the, the pandering is at all time high right now. I was telling you guys before I came on, someone shared with me that, um, even Pornhub for the rest of this month is showing nothing but their ebony clips. Um, you know, black porn, black porn matters, but it's it's the pandering is it's just listen, my inbox is flooded, like it's just flooded, and it's it's just amazing um how many companies feel those that feel as though they have to make statements is is it's pretty comical. Um, if you ask me, that's comical, and also all of the outing that people are doing with like their uh old old uh classmates and um their co-workers. Like this is just this is just weird times that we're in. And by the way, this is another reason why you should um you know support HBCUs because if you went to an HBCU, you don't have to worry about your old classmate, uh, you know, um, being outed so to speak. I don't know about that. I just want to. Yeah, I'm about to say. This is, no, this is you, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Because there's this this some of them that need to be you know um this this some know. people that go to HBCUs that should be tossed in a pit of unfortunate, uh, but you know. Not that, that, I mean, that, that, not like it is. Oh, not, not at my HBCU. Listen, they might commit like that. Jimmy, before you get thrown get in the fire, let everybody know what school you went to. Oh, Lincoln University. I claim Lincoln. Like I, I went to Lincoln. Um, that's my HBCU. Uh, Malik, I know you went somewhere uh, in Carolina, right? No, I didn't go somewhere in Carolina. I went to the illustrious. Oh, Durham. I'm sorry, you're in Durham. You ain't the, the illustrious yeah, listen, North Carolina Central University. I've been on. I've been on I've been on a lot of uh, HBCU campuses, and they're they're pretty. Um, I'm not going to say they're all the same because they're not all the same. But there's, I'm, I'm pretty. I'm telling you, there's some people there that um, you know, you got to watch out for. They on every campus. They're on Howard. I've been in Hampton, Cheney, yeah, Lincoln. Sure. Um, you name it. You, and you know which people I'm talking about too. Uh, <laughs> as Malcolm would call them, the bourgeoisies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, does anybody else have any opinion on corporate support for protesters? Oh, I do. I mean, oh, go ahead, go ahead, Courtney. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm look, I've been looking at the Tax Cut and Jobs Act for a while. Oh, you guys got your tax rate reduced by 15%. Give it over. Because at the end of the day, a lot of these corporations have not have not done the necessary diversity and inclusion. I'm going to say it again, diversity and inclusion work that needed to do that needed to be done to actually integrate integrate this workforce. I mean, I'm I can't tell you how many times that I've been the I, I want to call it, what what is it? Like the little chocolate chip in in the in the thing of milk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the fly in the bowl of milk. Oh no, I'm not a Man, not that's a, all of us. But that's the same. <laughs> I know, but I'm clarifying. Chocolate drop. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. No okay. smoke over here. No, no, I don't get it. And and so again, I think these corporations need to. I mean, there's a there's a Chinese proverb, you know, like you're pointing out the toothpick in my eye while you have a two by four in yours. I didn't say it right, but you got my point. Gotcha. But I, I share that to say, okay, you guys are doing all this outward work. And there was a tweet going around like, great, I saw your, your statement about Black Lives Matter. Matter, can I see your, your C-suite, please? Thank yep. you. Because if they mm -hmm. matter, they'll be in all levels of, of your organization. And that's in government too. Um, the government's not, you know, I, I've seen a lot of top level government. And then the middle management that actually does the day-to-day -day work, there's no one that looks like me. So... Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll say that across the board. Yeah, I'm going to take the support. Come on, fork it over. We need to get these people out of jail. Please. Thank you. Okay, and, and some of y'all people out there, like, y'all really are falling for the banana in the tailpipe, um, as Axel Foley would say. Like, because here, I've seen people say, oh, look, my favorite company came out with the email. Like, you know, they really about this. And it's that and the third. Like, that's all it took was an email to say <laughs> Black Lives Matter. They don't have one black person on their board. Like they, they don't do it. They don't yeah, put us in positions of power. Nothing. Yeah, and, and it reminds me. Of, it reminds me of what Malik said about like the athletes, right? It's a great book, uh, the Forty Million Dollar Slaves by William Roden, which goes into the power, the power and oppression within sports, and how we're never given power. We can play all day long, and we'll even pay you, but we'll never let you put you in positions of power because when we put you in positions of power, that allows you to empower others. It's not about the one individual. It's about what you can do for the collective. So. Um, it's interesting to see how many people all it took was an email for them to like feel good about you know their favorite restaurant or a streaming service or whatever it may be. 
So y- y- y'all gotta y'all gotta start asking for more, man. You can't be yeah, uh, uh, you know fooled by this BS. I, wanted- I know. I saw all these play all these players made Roger Goodell give a statement like, "Oh, we were wrong. We were wrong." But only because four or five of your top players said, "Listen, we need the NFL. We need you to say this." Right now, now what I would love to do, I know it won't happen, but I would love to do when the NFL come back, like, you know what, y'all? We not going to play that first quarter. We going to fall back. At least that, not the whole game. That first quarter, we going to chill. You know, I would love to see that action. But anyway, next. I, I'd love to add, yeah, I want to add some stuff, too, because I know um, we've been discussing some of the corporate responsibility and discussions. I have a little small slideshow I'd like to share. If that's helpful. Oh, y'all it. going in tonight. Hey, hey listen, hey, Tracy, Tracy, before you show your share, um, I saw you sneeze. Where's your, where's your thermometer? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I need you. I, I need to see I need to see your temperature. <laughs> I have allergies, no COVID-19. <laughs> you, you out here showing houses. No, I want to see that. <laughs> I have all the all right, allergies. <laughs> but yeah, okay. So let me let me do this with you guys. Um, because this has kind of been floating around um, some of my uh, circle of friends, but I want to share this so that way everybody can kind of see it. Can you see this? Nope, not yet. No, you got to add it. Let's see. Oh, sure. Oh, this one. So while we're waiting on um, while we're waiting on Tracy to get set up, I see there's a couple more comments in the uh, in the section. Go ahead. Uh, Sean Fleming said he got an email from the CEO of the five four three. Actually, schedule that to be sent out at a normal business time, like for real. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Jerome, Jerome Wallace says number three ranked boys basketball player Mikey Williams is considering HBCU. Yeah, I thought about that. I thought about that. That's pretty dope. That's pretty dope. All Can right. you see my screen? Can you see it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right. This is a list of all of the brand responses that have happened since all of the protests and Black Lives Matter have become in a full-fledged front line of the country. These are the table contests by theme, by all of the industries, and it literally goes into everyone. These are the people that you need to be holding accountable and Amen. making sure that this is not just a tweet, a Instagram post, a Facebook post, something just to put your company in the limelight. We need action behind these posts, brand managers. We need equity. We need yeah. Hey, yeah, equity. We need I need the smoke that Ben and Jerry's had. I need everybody to have the smoke that Ben and Jerry's had. If you don't have the same energy as Ben and Jerry's, I'm not sure what you're actually doing. Like, I'm not sure. Like, we everybody from Instagram to TikTok to Intel to Uber, Lyft, Facebook, Airbnb, Nextdoor, YouTube, all these people posted these posts. But where is your C-suite? Well, we know Beats by Dre at least got Dr. Dre, right? And I'm, do, and do, they? do they? Do they, right? And you know what? That's a great question because yeah. Apple owns them now, so I don't even know. Yeah, I thought he got I thought he got bread to go away. Um, no, they, no, Emmy and Jimmy are involved, but I don't know if they are C suite or board level participation. Got you. Got you. Tracy, you gotta share this with me because I I, okay. I need this just to make fun of these people hey, but, so i mean my question is how but okay they did this right so how do we keep them accountable like they are okay you did all that i i didn't so much have a problem with ben and jerry's because ben and jerry's has a long history but to Corey and jimmy's point i also don't necessarily trust them either because i think it was Corey made a great point that they're now owned by unilever but here's my thing where have you been at before all this where have are you been are you doing this now just to kind of get shine? Are you clout chasing? And so if you clout chasing, we already know what it's hitting for. <laughs> Corporate Co- clout chasing. Co- Cody, <laughs> Co- Cody, there you go, Jimmy. Cody, Cody said something. 
<laughs> hey, listen. But no, there, there's a there's a reason why Ben and Jerry chose the Rolling Hills and the Verdant Green of North Carolina Central University. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh wait a minute, y'all! Y'all Peloton was up there. Peloton was up there. They were yeah. there. Ben and Jerry's here. But I'm here for Ben and Jerry. And and they would and they did it with uh, Reverend Barber. That was major too. Like Reverend Barber, he's somebody like Reverend Barber. His stature needs to be way higher in today's movement. He's out here like really putting that work in all over the country. Reverend Barber put in that work. Is Reverend Barber the, the, the pastor that had a problem on the airline flight, the real tall brother? I don't know about that, but he's just a tall, know. tall little kind of hunchback a little bit. Like yep, that's him. That's yeah, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. He's yeah, he, he, get, he get busy. He get busy. He's, yep. he's everywhere. Yep. Yeah. These um these companies, man, they could have saved that, man. Like they 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 really, you know, that was a uh, they that that was they was on the league level with the stunt man. Like they, they, they want some stunt man. Like that, 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 that right? I, I enjoy the slideshow because I understand that we're supposed to hold them accountable. But there's only one way to hold those uh, companies accountable, which is to buy shares of those companies. Because by law, they're they're only beholden to shareholders. So those statements are fluffy. So by law, they're <laughs> beholden to shareholders. That's it. I own shares in Peloton. I mean, listen, listen you can go all that, though. As do I. Corey, that's a, that's a real statement. Like, I wonder, like, can we, can we do a block corporate takeover, like, hostile takeover of, like... You can. Listen, there's, there's dudes out there doing... Listen, I, I was just reading an article <laughs> about uh, Peter, right? So Peter was having a problem with somebody in San Francisco, right? And so what they did is... You know, they, they whatever company it was, they was giving them the assets, and then Peter said, "All right, cool." They bought a seat on their board, right? <laughs> that's the thing. That's the kind of stuff we could do if we stick together. The, all these animal lovers had a problem with somebody in San Francisco. The co a company was probably using I don't remember what the company was, but what they did, they bought a board. They bought a board seat. They said, mm -hmm. "All right, you don't want you don't want to talk that, to that, me." That's right there. that point, though, right? What we have to do, and I, I do want to get topic. I do, I do want to. Uh, I do want to get Courtney on this because Courtney and I actually talk about this very much, right? We got to start investing together because by, as individuals, we would know there's no way we'll be able to do that. Mm -hmm. But if we had like absolutely black fund, right? We will be able to buy board seats on the, on the boards that or on the companies that we want to affect change. But real quick, I mean, I want Courtney to speak to that because again, we have conversations about that all the time. So I, I think one of the bigger things that I that I think people forget is you can always, as a shareholder, make a demand on the board. When a corporation is public, there are certain things, uh, things that they are to do. I mean, I shouldn't even say public. If you're a corporation, you're a corporation, and your obligation is to your shareholders. So you can make a demand on your board. If your board is not doing something that you feel that is in line with what's going to basically affect the company's bottom line, then you can step in. And I think a lot of people don't understand, like when they get a proxy vote, when they see their proxy, and when I mean by proxy, if you're a shareholder, you have a right to vote for the board of, board of directors of the company. And you look at it and people just kind of, some people ignore it. Other people kind of just pick whoever because there's a recommendation. They're like, oh, we recommend all these people. But then you can look at these board of directors and say, you're up as a candidate for a board of directors, but what have you done to increase the movement? Oh, you haven't done anybody, anything. Okay. But if all the shareholders, black shareholders got together, they could potentially change the um, the outlook of the board or what the, I should yep. say, the makeup of the board. And that's what- Man, they, absolutely. But, but you have to learn that, I tell people all the time, I tell my students all the time, you have to learn the rules of the game and then you have to play it better than anyone else. But you cannot go to a football field and expect to hit a home run. It's not going to happen. We are too, like, it's, Bars. listen, it's frustrating because it's like, listen, I want you to learn the game. You got to learn the game. And I mean, honestly, you can see us on the field is that we are the best athletes they have. And that part of it is because we are students of the game. Don't stop learning. We can still learn basketball, football, baseball, all of that. But we need to learn the corporate game. Because once we learn the corporate game, as strategists, we will be able to master the corporate game. But we're not even trying. Anything, anything we put our minds to, we master. That's the crazy part. Yep. So we just have to focus on that, right? I was having a conversation with Malik last week. And I was telling him one of my life goals is to walk into a, it didn't matter what company it is with 50 to 100 people that look just like me into a, <laughs> when they have a shareholder, just, meeting. Meeting. just yep. to see the faces, 
Yo, just to see the faces on the other people, because we got to start moving as a group, whether we're talking about, um, you know, group economics in terms of investing. And even when it comes to politics, you want to bring politics into it. Too. We need like block votes. This is this is kind of what we're talking about. And I know a lot of people that do the same thing you just said, Courtney, they get their proxy votes and they just toss them, never look at them. But if you're if you're truly invested in a company, if you own one share of a company, you own equity in that company. You can do your research. You can make your you make you can make your voice heard because to Corey's point, that's who they're beholden to. They're beholden to their shareholders, and this goes back to Malik's point. So what's interesting is what's in the best interest of their shareholders is this pandering that's currently going on. Right. So I think that's interesting in itself. That now what's in the best interest of the shareholders is the pandering going on. So I don't know if you want to consider that progress, considering you know a couple of years ago just ignoring this altogether would have been right. in the best interest of. The but it's no longer that now you have to say something so um but my thing is what we're gonna do after this we have to hold them accountable are they going to give us equity we want power like we don't want emails at 4 a.m we want power we want equity we want a seat at the table as solange would say hey listen so so going back going back to this but Corey said what y'all said i really this whole time i just really been thinking like instead of buying all these seats on the board like let's just find right the black people that already we're supposed to buy more shares. Pick a company doesn't matter, you know. Say Nike, right? We can find all the black folks that have that have those shares, and still continue to buy those shares. And then we can have like a Facebook group, a club, or whatever, like black Nike holders, and that be a block vote. That really could be yeah. about some real, some I mean, real. Right, right, right. Right, right. 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 Right now, we got six. Right. You we got six right. of us. But you can't, you can't do the whole S and P. You can't do the whole S and P, right? No, 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 no. I'm saying, let's pick a company. Let's pick a company. Everybody watching. Let's pick a company. You know what I'm saying? Let's organize it. We got six of us right here. We got a bunch of people watching on YouTube as well as Facebook. Let's pick a company. Let's organize and let's let's pick a company. Let's make do what you said, Malik. Let's buy it. Let's show up to a shareholders meeting. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully we um you know won't have to wear our mask by the time next year. You know who knows? Maybe we will. Yeah, sure. But uh, <laughs> let's show up. Gotta, be, gotta make sure we safe. <laughs> but hey, let's show up to a shareholders must, meeting. I'm gonna say yes, probably Nike because listen, I know. So you can think of a company like Tesla, but I don't know how many percentage of black people, especially like um, retail investors, are buying Tesla. But we know retail investors are buying Nike. Retail investors are buying Adidas. I'm saying. And so I think That's Nike would be a real easy one. Everybody, anybody that buys stock, they, people always say, buy, uh, buy stock in what you buy. And people that mm -hmm. listen to that, buy Nike. So I, Nike I mean, I don't, I don't agree. What I would, what I would want to do is buy stock and companies that already have a history and track record of helping black people. You could make that argument with Nike with Cap um, and with Serena and with a few others. So I, I love that. Nike makes their money on controversy. They're not really supporting those athletes. They make their money I, on I, controversy. I, no, I, I'm not going to say that. Corey, I agree. But what I would say, though, is that they didn't have to do what they did with Cat. Is it Was it profit motivated? Hell yeah. 1,000%. I don't think anybody is dumb um, and believes they just did it for the good of their hearts. Well, we, I'm going to Google their C-suite. That's Courtney. Yeah. Uh, Google that's Courtney with it. I, I would let's, also. Let's, let's be, I would. Not I would to pull up to the radio one shareholders meeting. I would look at Starbucks because I know Starbucks has a diverse uh, suite. Radio one. Mm -hmm. So you I, would think Radio one would have in a diverse board? They don't. Yeah, but Radio one. I'm just joking. I'm joking. Oh. I'm joking, man. Oh, uh, I'm just saying. I, I yeah, thought I mean, you had the use of comfort. Let's not own trash stuff. Yes, we, it's got to be. A Damn. Good <laughs> whoa, whoa. This is this is not investment advice. <laughs> listen, yeah. I'll be out there. I, I listen. I've been looking at because uh, there's a couple of different black companies that are public. I, I couldn't. I couldn't. I wouldn't invest in Radio One with your money, Jimmy. I'm sorry. Make sure you clarify. This is not investment advice. It's not investment um, advice, but okay. So listen, I, I got it. Jimmy, see me do this a million times. <laughs> This is the the, uh, the comments. Yeah, let's go the comments. Does not re reflect those of the entire Black Wealth Project. They are Kamari Ellis's comments only. And remember, past performance is not an indicator of future results. So if you are looking to get investment advice or buy an investment, talk to your investment advisor and tax advisor. We clear, Jimmy. Thank you, sir. Good. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I, I, this timer is good. 
All right, so let's, let's go. I, I know Kamari. I know Kamari would have thought about stocking Ford because that's his thing. But you know, uh, nah, listen, I just have a goal. I just have a goal. Y'all, y'all see yeah. it jump right. Can we talk about? So I, I want I, Christopher has a good point, but I think can we talk about real quick how the market just kind of blew up all week? Can we talk about that? Give me one second. Let me read Christopher's uh, thing because I got it on the screen. So Christopher Catchin says, I think black people need to take a step back on this. It might be hard to accept that we are powerless in this situation, but I consider this time to be a watershed moment for white America. This is the time for them to check their privilege and call out racism in their circles. Um, can, I, can, I, can I grab that? Oh, I don't. I, I, yeah, Malik, but, but let's take this and then move accordingly. But I don't think we're powerless. I think that's that's totally false, Christopher. By the way, thank you for joining us and thank you for the comments. We're yeah. never powerless, right? Only time we're powerless is when we don't have a choice. Only time we don't have a choice is when we're dead. So listen, we always have power. Never forget that. I do agree, though, is that, you know, let white corporations have their conversations amongst them, but we need to continue on. And uh, Malik, um, 30 seconds, and then we're going to go to Courtney. All right. So real quick. So I don't think that we're powerless because the city council in Minnesota, um, Minneapolis, I think it is, unanimously voted to disband the police. What had happened? I don't know. But the entire city council has a veto proof um, vote to disband it. I don't know what they're going to do in this place. We saw in Fairfax, Virginia, a police officer was just arrested for assault for uh, tackling a guy with mental health issues. The guy, you saw the guy up in Buffalo push the old man down he got charges nah bro that's not that's not powerless this is this is real change this is right now that never would last week that wouldn't happen none of that would have happened just last week right. now when we come back to power what we're talking about is the police unions have power because they gifted politicians and they all vote as a block at least allegedly i don't know how the black folks blow black police officers vote but the point is they give money if we come to money to come together and we put up the same amount of money or more as the police unions these politicians then they have no choice but the, we showing up and giving bread these politicians have no choice but to either listen to us or get out and that weakens the police union our power is unity you always got pop powerless that's a crazy statement even say that yeah. Bro, I, I want to say again, that, that goes to our main topic. Let, let, let Courtney, let Courtney burn. No, no, no. Let me let me just do this uh, real quick. Ten seconds. Um, the other thing I want I want to remind people about is that if y'all notice, the riots are not just taking place in black areas right now. Yeah. They're also taking place in white areas right now. I was in Chestnut Hill, and there's a lot of stuff going on up there. That's part of the reason why we're seeing this pandering because they're saying we can't contain this. We have to do something. Because it's not just in the quote unquote hood anymore. So even though a lot of people have been throwing shaded looters and protesters, and they are definitely different, um, it's showing to make a real dent in what's going on. Sorry about that, Courtney. Go ahead. Oh. I mean, listen, we're talking we're talking about money. And I think I thought it was so interesting this week. And just shout out to you, because I did did you talk me off a ledge with MGM or was that so my MGM, I made a play in MGM a couple of weeks ago because I knew that Vegas was going to open. So when Vegas closed, I did a put. When anybody, listen, this is not investment advice. You know, if you have any thoughts about purchasing anything, don't listen to me. Courtney told me to buy it. No, I didn't. So, but I was looking at MGM because I said, oh, MGM is, Vegas is closing. MGM is a really big player. I was looking at when, but the options were too expensive. But I did a put on MGM earlier in the pandemic. Now that Vegas opening, I did a call and my call, I did a call like what a week and a half ago in anticipation. And that call went through the roof and I was sitting there like, oh my gosh, but here's my concern and Kamari. And I think a couple other people brought it up on our call just now is that the market is just not rational. You know, we're still at depression levels in terms of our unemployment and more specifically and more, more personally, African-Americans, the rate of unemployment for African-Americans is abysmal. And it's going. And my concern is, is that it's not going to get better anytime soon. When white America gets a, gets a cold, black America gets the flu. And, and someone else said pneumonia. So again, I'm just really concerned. And this just doesn't make sense because we're still, we're not recovered. And everybody's acting like everybody's going outside, taking on the mask, taking their mask off. Everybody's thinking it's business as usual in the markets and it's not. And my concern is when this other shoe drops, when life gets real, 
when we, we kind of move back into reality, as Jimmy said earlier, what's going to happen? And my concern is that those who are uneducated and unsophisticated in the investing world, this is going to hit them by surprise. Absolutely. Get your war chest ready. And, and, and that goes to like having an investor's mindset and to our overall thing about rebellion, because it's about um, having the skill set. Um, as Courtney mentioned earlier, you have to have the education. So uh, Brother Jay Johnson, who was um, just in our chat, when, uh, when, the, when the riots first happened, he, he hit me and said, listen, let's look at some glass companies because, you know, all this glass being broken. I made two plays. Uh, it's a company called OI Glass, and I showed this in our, our private investment group. Um, got an option, right? Made thirty over thirty percent. It dropped, you know, got out after thirty percent. It went down a little bit. Reposition, jumped right back in. Another twenty-seven and a half percent. And I took some of the bread and donated to the Know Your Rights campaign, which is kind of like what I'm talking about overall with the show, right? So when you when you're able to use or leverage these systems to make capital, you can get your worldview, right? You can look at your worldview and you can actually fund that, whatever that may be. Whatever that may be, you can add on that. Um, the Koch brothers. There's a great book on the Koch brothers. And a lot of people will get pissed reading the book. But what I took from the book is they have these beliefs, right, wrong, or indifferent. And their whole objective is make capital and fund these beliefs, right? right. Now, these guys are a little evil when you get into it. But the fact of the matter is one of the guys who wrote the book says there is no opposition that, that goes against those beliefs that are doing the same thing. We're screaming vote, vote, vote instead of putting our bread up and, and pushing that to get our uh, our actual point across. For sure. We got to do both. But Jimmy, to that point, you just touched on something. And I want to bring up a comment from Oil House. Again, Oil House, thanks for rocking with us tonight. Appreciate you. But I want to talk about this comment. Shout out, shout out to Oil House. Absolutely. Capitalism is not radical. It's conservative. The idea of business shouldn't be this uniform. They're capitalist businesses, socialist businesses, et cetera. So I want to I want to take a shot at this first, because um, I think we need to to really study economic systems and, and really understand what they are. First and foremost, I'm a black capitalist. Proudly have no problem with it. Capitalism gives you the most freedom out of any other economic program. By the way, we've never seen capitalism. We've never seen capitalism in this country. Why? Because this country is a blend. It's a blend of capitalism, and it's a blend of socialism. If we were truly a capitalistic country, we'd have to pay for all the kids going to school. We would have to pay for every road. We would have to pay for every light every time we used it, or at least on a monthly basis. I feel that the term capitalism gets thrown around a lot. And it's bad because it, it turns off a lot of people in our community to doing business and building capital. All capitalism is, is saying that, hey, I can do business without a whole lot of government interference. Now, all the extra stuff that comes off the imperialism and things like that, that's extra. But that truly is not the definition of capitalism. And so remember, under socialism, you got to get permission from the government with everything we do. As black people, how would that work? Knowing our history, getting approval or getting permission <sighs> from the government Man, with everything we do. I mean, like, I really need y'all to, like, start really thinking about these things on a deeper level. I know our ancestors talked about it, the Fred Hamptons, the Black Panthers, and everybody else. That was a different time. Shout out to them, by the way, because they did have a lot of it right. But when we start looking at how we're going to control and have power on things, we got we to gotta change the game up. We got to switch the pitch up a little bit, y'all. Anybody else got anything for that? <laughs> it just reminds me. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Tracy. Uh, it was Courtney. It was me. Really, you're blending us together. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I just no, because I, 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 I couldn't hear. I didn't know who it was. No, it's fine. Ahead, though. Um, no, I think Kamara, you make a really valid point. I made a resolution, and I don't believe in resolutions. But I made a resolution earlier this year that I was not going to discuss uh, economic systems with people who didn't study study economics because the things that I hear out of their mouths, I'm like, where did you get that from? Did you get that from Adam Smith's Wealth of Nations? Is that where you got it from? What about John Locke? Did you read any of these books that are the foundation of this economic system? It, just because you're looking out your window and ob observing something or you read a book on based on someone's version, the United States version of capitalism, which you said properly, I think it's a mix of capitalism, socialism. Um, and I think it's, it's more, and when we think about socialism, it's more about 
business uh, socialism. Like, really, just it's it's like it's corporate. Really, it really comes from feudalism too. Like, yeah, you, gotta, you gotta add you gotta add feudalism in there too because we 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 took a lot of the things that was happening in Europe and brought them with us over here. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you gotta add feudalism into the. Exactly. But that's the whole point of knowing. Uh, That's exactly the whole point. It's about knowing all these other systems that existed and how they blend and melt here in the United States. And it's not to our benefit. But again, I think out of all the systems that exist, capitalism is probably the most beneficial if you use it properly. Um, a lot of people get upset because they see what they what they see outside. But I'm like, that's go, that's good. That's, that's corporate welfare. <laughs> that's it. I don't I don't know what else to tell yeah. people. But because you don't understand the way it's the real the real version, the real deal, we're stuck here and people get confused. Right. 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 All right, folks. No, I mean, I this, gonna, this is really great. Gonna, I just want to say. I just want to say one thing, right? You know, we talk about capitalism and no one has ever been able to eloquently tell me another system that will work um a lot better because I agree with you, Kamari. And, and that's kind of the problem. It reminds me of like uh, Winston Churchill when he said uh, democracy is the worst form of government except for everything else that was tried and failed. That's kind of how I feel about capitalism, right? Right. It's, 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 like, it's the worst form except for everything else, you know, so. I need someone to actually break that down, how it will work. And also keep in mind when you do that, that um, we don't have any power. So to Kamari's point, imagine trying to ask for certain things that we, you know, look what we get now. You know, all we get is emails at 4 a.m. <laughs> Facts. All right. So there's, there's a couple of comments and then we're going to begin to, uh, to wind everything down. Uh, Jay Johnson. Thank you, Jay Johnson, for your comment and viewing with us tonight. Corporate black support is a pacifier. It's an old tactic that's always been used. Most of those dollars will go to civil rights establishments that distribute those funds to primarily white women. Ouch. Factual. Facts. Facts, though. I mean, even when you look at um, the affirmative action, most of that money, most of those opportunities went to white women. All right, Christopher Ketchum said, you made your point quite clear. I had to regroup after that graceful verbal lashing, LOL. I promise I won't come. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Christopher is all. No, we, we we appreciate that commentary, Christopher. Though you, you you really you really helped us to move the conversation along. So keep us thinking. No, I would be good. Good comment. Absolutely. Yeah, and absolutely. Listen, Courtney gives everybody a verbal action, so don't 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 feel like that way. About it. I I get them often. She beats them well. Yeah. <laughs> wait a second. Wait a second. I don't think that's true. Uh, Courtney, oh, you better get one now. <laughs> yeah, I'm about to get one now. Exactly. Y'all see it, right? Yeah. Y'all see it. She already put Kamari over her knee. <laughs> Listen, y'all are something else today. Um, but gentlemen <laughs> and Tracy, I'm going to have to step off. I am teaching this evening about the stock market, and it starts at 830. Well, Courtney, before you step nice. off, let everybody know how they can help you. How they can help me. Yes, support Follow you where they can find you. Yeah, at. just follow me, y'all. <laughs> follow you um, I'm, I hang out on Instagram the most. So um, the Ivy Investor on Instagram. I'm on Facebook, but not so much. And I certainly don't tweet that much. However, um, just I'll be working on a couple of different things. I'm doing a read class later on this month that will be available. But more so, just follow me on Instagram and like and comment and have conversations. I will talk to you guys and see you guys next week. All right, thanks, Courtney. Nice. All right, everybody. I think that's actually a great place to end. Does anybody have any other comments before we uh, wrap everything up? Oh, I forgot. No, I forgot. Our black magic moment of the week. Everybody's supposed to have a black magic moment of the week. Something that gave you joy. Black excellence. Like, did you see anything that made you happy? I don't don't remember seeing that on the uh, rundown. It's on the rundown. I'll start with something that gave me joy. Right. I'm 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 a less than a fan of Frank Rizzo. Really, mm-hmm. fuck Rizzo. I'm, I'm just gonna keep it a being fuck Rizzo. Right. Mm-hmm. And so when they pulled down that statue of Rizzo, that kind of that gave me a moment of joy because that dude said SWAT to my block and he killed a lot of folks that I love. So fuck that dude. Mm-hmm. All right. Hey, Amen to that. I'll add, Yo. I'll go after that. Um, even though I feel like it has been talked through and been controversial, 
it really, really made me, gave me joy to see the plaza with the street that uh, extended into the White House is now called Black Lives Matter. Pennsylvania Water. Avenue, Pennsylvania Avenue, yeah. Pennsylvania Avenue is now Black Lives Matter Plaza. Yeah. Love it. And love to see the paint, the color, the aerial views, all of the shots, all of the people taking selfies and Instagram. Like, that did my heart some good. Yeah, shout out to Mayor, to uh, your honor, Mayor Muriel Bowser from uh, Delta Sigma Theta. Yes, shout out to the mayor. <laughs> no Greeks out there doing good work. Right? Greek, Greek, Greek from the work in. Right. And, uh, no, listen, look, along the lines you want me now to actually to watch that statue of the tra uh, slave trader in London come down, like that was a major sight yeah. to see. I yeah. don't even remember uh, Cat's name, but it doesn't matter. The statue out of here now, how they just went here, like just to see all those old monuments of the past, you know, everybody, like even shout to the rioters, man. Shout to the people on Lancaster Avenue with boxes of sneakers for sale. You know, shout to everybody, man. Like that, all that, like listen, just go get to how you live. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what you got? Yo, shout out to the uh the people on Lehigh Ave who um you know was giving away free food. I don't know how they got it, you know what I'm saying? I, I ain't judging them, but they was they was just giving it back to the community. But honestly, my moment this week, um, not as profound as some of you guys. Someone shared a, a, a Twitter thread with me. Someone <laughs> compiled um a whole thread full of like racist people um catching hands Ooh. um going through this whole process. And someone made a whole thread full of it. And, uh, you know, it was pretty entertaining, you know. So uh, I'm going to share with you guys once we get off, I, off I of here. But that. that's, my, that's my black black magic. That's my black magic moment of the week. Gotcha. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Dang, I wish we could have shared that. That would have been dope. But moving right along, moving right along. Um, my my uh, point of joy this week, I'm a major hip-hop head. One of my favorite podcasts is uh, Talib Kweli's People's Party. And this week he interviewed Reginald Hudlin. And so if you're not familiar with Reginald Hudlin, Reginald Hudlin is a major director. He directed House Party, House Party 2, Boomerang, and um, many others, right? But those are some of the classics. He did an interview with Reginald Hudlin, and I feel like it was everything. So that that's my uh, my black magic moment for the for the week. I would encourage you. I got to check that interview out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Reginald Hudlin, Peace yeah. Party. It's... Uh, I want to say it's on. Uh, I forget the platform. It's on. It's on YouTube, ain't it? Yeah, it's, it's on, on YouTube. YouTube. It's on YouTube, and you can listen. But to also, the interview on um, Spotify. Also, uh, Reginald Hudlin did have one series. He uh, wrote the Black Panther too. Well, he had a whole like run yeah, um, of the, the Black Panther the comic, yes. which was fire. It, his version was fire. So, well, him and Sana Hasi Coates got the two best ones. Yeah, well, you know, just to piggyback on that, right? He he introduced the idea of him and Storm. I'm nerding out on y'all a little bit. Y'all not for me. I, I was. I, I kind of thought that way, but you went with me, so like I'm cool now. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he married Storm, right? That was a product of Reginald Hudlin, and also the introduction of Shuri, the Black Panthers, um, yep. or T'Challa's sister. He introduced that as well. So shout yes, out. Yes, he to did. Him. Shout out to Tyler Quali. I don't feel bad now. You 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 went right there. You went right there. Come on, I don't feel bad no more. Oh man, yeah. we, we Gucci baby. We all good. We all good. So listen, everybody. I appreciate everyone that joined us tonight. Remember, every week at seven p.m., the Blackwell Project will be appearing. Here we'll be live on Facebook. We'll be live on YouTube. In the interim, keep talking about rebelling. Keep talking about ownership. Keep being black. And follow us on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram at the Black Wealth project. Again, thank you everybody and everyone have a great night and be safe out in these streets. Later. Peace. Peace.